Lord, and it's a devastating indictment of our government and of our society. When the photographs of camp were shown at the Pasadena Art Museum some years ago, I burst into tears and could not stop the tears from flowing. All the pent-up emotion held back for so many years was released. The numbness of the evacuation was finally lifted. And because of the humiliation and shame, I could never tell my four children my true feelings about that event in 1942. I did not want my children to feel the burden of shame and feeling of rejection by their fellow Americans. I feel that this hearing has, has been long overdue for I equate the uh, evacuation with rape. Uh, a rape victim finds it very difficult to uh, talk about it and suffers from shock. And uh, I think that we have been through that period where it has been difficult to talk about. I've never been able to talk about this, but more people have come up to me and said, I, sh I must speak up. My, my children, even my own children, don't know that my brother was shot in the back. When on December 7, 1941, 11 p.m., the FBI entered our home and arrested him and gave no reason. I asked him, when will he return? The FBI agent as replied, you may never see him again. In 48 hours, we were told to pack up and leave from the place we called home for at least 50 years or more. Two guys walk in my house, and they came to my bedroom, and they say, hey, hey, buddy, wake up. I, do, I wake up, and I ask them, who the hell do you guys are? <laughs> then they flash FBI. He say, FBI. So I thought, what the hell did I do? You are alien, enemy alien. On the train, we, first time I had a steak. So you know what oh, some of these old men said? The old men said, hey, they feeding us because we're going to die. So I thought, no, 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 this country they ain't going to do that kind of stuff, man. You know, it's a democratic country, bill right, constitutional, <coughs> and all that, that. Just go with it, gee. But they're not going to do that. This is democracy. You know what one old man say? No, this is not democracy. This is democracy shit, he said. <laughs> then we reached the place where we see nothing but the snow. We call the Bismarck, North Dakota. Now, I found out the weather was a 30 below zero. A 30 below zero. <coughs> now, I had to walk through the snow with my bare foot and slippers. And the third day, I had a frostbite on my feet. I couldn't go. So that I asked our friends to bring food to my camp. When we got to Santa Anita, we were assigned housing in the stables where one horse was housed. The, we were three families. They came to say goodbye to me before being moved to Machi, Colorado, and I waved goodbye to my sister from the window. I did not know then that it would be four and a half years before I would see any of them again. Not see my father again until the middle of 1946. This inhumane, cruel treatment and happening took place in the good old United States and not in Gestapo, Germany. Hard to believe, isn't it? On August 27, 1941, at 2 a.m., we were informed that our baby had passed away. At the time of my birth, my mother's physician in camp performed a tubal ligation on her. She never, never gave her consent. As a Buddhist at that time, my conscientious objector status was not recognized nor respected, but completely ignored. Shortly thereafter, would you believe it? I was placed on a deportation list by the Justice Department. Are you willing to serve for the United States in case of an enemy invaded us? And he said yes or no. And another one like, are you willing to be a loyal to the United States? And yes or no, and uh, etc. I wrote no to all the way through with my anger and dis disgust and frustration. The brutal action taken against us loyal citizens 
My blood was burning with agony and frustration. I was so disgusted that I requested for deportation to Japan, a country I had never seen before. Then I was sent to the lake. My feelings on this matter were just as strong as and in full agreement with those who chose to renounce their citizenship, even though the renunciants and I took paths that were poles apart. We were the only Japanese American family on Kodiak, uh, in Kodiak, Alaska. In a short time, my father and two uncles were arrested and put in concentration camps. I am very bitter about this. I have not seen my father since I was 11 years old. I am now 51 years old. I have missed my father very much, and I wonder. I, <clears throat> I wonder if he's alive today. <clears throat> Has as for now, all I can do As for now, all I can do is, is hope and pray. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Houston. We are, we are Peruvian citizens. We are not even in the United States at the time. Now, I understand that, in fact, uh, 5,000 Japanese Peruvians were uh, exchanged for American prisoners of war now. In this process, in this uh, transport, transportation process, the uh, baby died. So we stayed in Christian City until uh, summer, of 1940, summer of 1947. I remember as a child when I used to stay, uh, when, we, when we used to stay at Pledge of Allegiance to the United States of America. I, I never felt I never felt comfortable by saying it. I couldn't understand why. I think today now I understand why it was that I could not say those words comfortably. The pain, trauma, and stress of the incarceration experience was so overwhelming, we used the psychological defense mechanisms of repression, denial, and rationalization to keep us from facing the truth. The truth was that the government we trusted, the country we loved, the nation to which we had pledged loyalty had betrayed us, had turned against us. Our natural human feelings of rage, fear, and helplessness were turned inward and buried. Our scars are permanent and deep. One significant consequence was the effectively silencing of an entire Japanese American community to become the Gomen Nasai people those who tread lightly as if unwelcome. As one student stated in her term paper, the shame and humiliation that my parents suffered were passed on to me. And although I never saw bobbed wire, tasted mess hall food, or lived in cramped barracks, my mind is still imprisoned from that experience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Listen, I'm sorry. If we have outbursts like this, we're going to ask people to be removed. We know how some people are. Now, wait a second. Uh, there are some.
what are the uh, economic losses? The six to eight billion dollars, although it sounds astonishing, is a minimal figure because we are dealing only with what the government allowed in 1948, okay, which as you know was virtually nothing. It was nothing for psychological damages, physical damages, right. anything that could be connected with, with evacuation, uh, wrongful death, wrongful incarceration. Frustration, anger still in my blood. I now demand a monetary compensation of $1 million from the United, United States government. <laughs> for ruining my life, career, and injury inflicted upon me and my family. I also demand a monetary compensation of half a million dollars each to my five children. No one benefits when truth is silent. The bigots and uninformed demagogues and persecutors will become increasingly suppressive and abusive, Attemp attempting to diminish our characters through crude jokes and half-truths. I will be proud to be a Japanese, and I would want to be equally proud to be an American. I do hope my late father's ideals and expectations for this country will someday be realized. The redress we are seeking cannot return to us the years of unjustified imprisonment, emotional, mental, and physical hardships we endured, or any treasured possessions we were forced to sell or were stolen from us. Those in positions of power today who will be deciding the fate of this issue not only finalize it for us, but for every citizen, present and future, who could be subjected to collective punishment because of his race, creed, or national origin. The final judgment will affect all Americans, now and for all time. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for all those that who suffered this humility and the loss of freedom, I ask the commission to search their souls, to be compassionate, it is an opportunity for us to continue to learn and to sum up this collective experience and to channel the anger and pain into a fighting spirit that demands reparations. Thank you. And most importantly, we strongly call for direct monetary compensation to each victim of the concentration camps. This is a historic and significant event. Any compromised recommendation will be a compromise of justice. Thank you. They talk about being let out of camp in 45, 44, 43. I don't think we ever did get out of camp. I think we're beginning to get out of camp now. <laughs>